Okay, and we're back, and we're back, but we're looking a little funny. Uh, Chris, I guess Andy left, so that leaves us with just you and me. Um, just me and you, bud. Just you and me. Unless, Andy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I just turned off my camera momentarily. Ah, uh, you turned off your camera. That's what happened. Okay. Um, so, no big deal there. Um, so, questions and answers, guys. We're listening to the chat room here. We're asking if there's any questions. This is the post-show, technically. Um, it looks like someone was asking where the Rebel Base headquarters is. And uh, we do think that is at the, the, new, tech, uh, the new Tech headquarters. Uh, PTZ Optics has a Rebel Base out here in Philadelphia as well. So there's one Rebel Base you know, in, um, in Texas. And then we've got the other Rebel Base over here in Philly. And, uh, I can neither confirm nor deny those those allegations. <laughs> um, so let's see. I mean, guys, I think we did a really good job of just showing it. Okay, so here's a question, uh, and I knew this was going to come. When is the native uh, support for NDI coming in the PTZ Optics cameras? We're saying before the end of the year. Um, that could be pushed back. It could be pushed forward. I know that a prototype uh, has been created. Um, so I'm really excited about that. You know, what Chris has shown us today is going to work perfectly with a PTZ optics camera with USB. So you plug that in, there's going to be no delay whatsoever, imperceivable delay right into NDI, voop, right into your TriCaster. Now with SDI, HDMI, voop, right into the TriCaster. What you're looking for is just IP. And Chris just showed you a solution that's going to have about 150 milliseconds. So it's not going to work for your main cam looking right at the broadcaster where you just can't have any latency. But it will work for the times that you need, um, you know, a shot of the back of the crowd or a shot of a baseball field or a shot of someone who's not directly talking to the camera. It's going to work completely fine. So, Chris, I don't know if you want to kind of, kind of add to that. No, everything you guys said is it, it, uh, you just kind of covered in a nutshell. Also, I, I'm actually looking forward to uh, when you guys release that. I think that puts you guys in that very rare space. Um, as far as I know, actively on the market, no camera in, in internally supports NDI Direct. So you know, if you guys have that, you're just you're you're a, a monster in the space because that's just so much more integration that you could just say, hey, you know what, PTZ Optics is on the forefront. And, and you can just use this instantaneously. Turn your camera on, it's got NDI in it, boom. So, so that's going to be awesome, and like you already said, as is today, we can already use PTZ Optics cameras, we can already get the stream in. If you use a capture card, you can capture card it in. There's a lot of different ways to uh, tackle it today, as is. So and Jim's got a great question that I've always wanted to ask, and you probably don't know the answer to this, but I'm sure you can twist some arms for me here. Is there any date for direct IP control with the TriCaster interface for the PTZ Optics cameras. Is that something that you're talking about? Have you been super busy with NDI and not been able to look at that? Um, IP control, camera control for the, in the TriCaster. Uh, this would be in our, uh, P so in our PTZ control. Obviously this isn't something I would know firsthand. Um, but yeah, definitely. I could, ask, I could ask people around and, and forward this up to somebody who would know and get something more concrete, or or, or at least a ballpark idea. Um, if not, if, if there's any sort of con contemporary technical issue, but as you already said, Paul, I mean, these guys are they are so deep on NDI and making all these different integrations work. And I, it's it's like I said, it's pretty much weekly, and at least one, at least twice a month, there's new things being associated with NDI. And so the uh, the scope and scale of NDI is ever growing. But obviously, we want to cover these kind of things as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I got another question from Roberto here, and I knew you wouldn't know the answer to that, but if you could, uh, for me and for everyone else in the chat, to just put, you know, push some people over there and say, hey, look, they've got open source control software. They have Visca over IP. It shouldn't be too hard. See if you can poke somebody into doing that for us. Um, Roberto's asking, as you mentioned, will it include PoE? So from my understanding, the third generation will have uh, you know, the NDI built in. 
PoE is going to be a separate piece of hardware that's going to be in the sixty to eighty dollar range that we're trying to roll out like immediately. Like I have one right there. Like I could pick it up and plug it into my camera and make it work. Like we have them. We're just working on like getting like bulk stock, getting the data sheets and the user manuals all ready. So the PoE is going to come very quickly. That that's like on its way now. Um, so PoE is going to be good for Gen 1, it's going to be good for Gen 2. I mean, honestly, it's just a PoE adapter that brings out 12 volt power and then also breaks out the Ethernet port so you can still do your streaming and everything on it. So that is really, really close to being market ready. In fact, if you need one for some cer certain situation, I can even just ship you one um, for a project that needs it because um, we do have them here. They're just not ready for market. Um, so that part is really here and ready to go. And uh, Roberto is asking Chris if you have a Twitter account. Uh, I do have a Twitter account. Uh, I am, I believe, at Tricaster Kid. I'm ah. at Tricaster Kid on Twitter, and I'm at Tricaster Kid on Instagram. Uh, I have a, a public Facebook, and I have a private Facebook. But uh, the public Facebook you should be able to find with uh, Chris Burgos and looking up new tech. But yeah, at TriCaster Kid, just no no special characters, just that. Okay, Chris. Now I want to have you on the show more often because that's such an easy handle. I can be like, and hey, we've got at TriCaster Kid here today, uh, you know, talking the TriCaster language. That's great. Yeah. It's like, a, so I kind of made it because, you know, New Tech's out in Texas, so you get a little yeah. bit of that cowboy feel to it, you know? Yeah. Like the TriCaster Kid. Yeah, nice. So it's a it's a cool little thing I got. It, it, to be honest, I, I it's one of the cool things that being part of the company, I can sort of handle these things. And also, if anyone ever wants to see, I, I travel a ton. I actually have pictures of your guys' booth from uh, Infocom on my uh, on my Instagram account. So whenever I'm doing an event with anybody, I'm always posting pictures over there, getting pictures of people in front of the camera, getting people who are doing production. So uh, I'm at Tricaster Kid on Instagram and on Twitter. Cool. Um, questions are still coming. Roberto's asking, what will the latency be like with the third generation PTC cameras in the TriCaster system? So basically what we're doing is the TriCat, the NDI is an extremely, it's processor intensive, okay? So we didn't know that NDI was coming when we built the Gen 2 cameras, right? So we had no, we didn't know, maybe TriCaster could have told us, but we didn't know. And the chipset that we standardized on is not fast enough to process NDI. You know, it's a very high quality 1080p 60 video at like almost zero latency. So once we upgrade the chips inside, and of course we're kind of waiting you know, for the market to hit that right price point and availability where we don't have to like raise the prices significantly in order to build NDI in. So that's part of the reason. But we have found the chip that we're going to use. And I think that's proprietary. I don't think I can tell people the actual chip we've decided on. I know you guys at New Tech know because we've sent it to you. Um, but we found a chip that's going to work. Uh, we now have to redo the whole board. And from what I understand, the prototype is ready. It's uh, working. It's sending video. It's just still a little rough around the edges, but it does work. So, you know, taking products to market takes months and months and months. Even if you've got a working prototype, that doesn't mean you have a thousand of them to ship tomorrow. So it's going to take a while, but when it is done, it should be as fast as plugging an HDMI directly into a monitor, meaning less than a line or two of actual video delay. So a blink wow. of an eye, less than a blink of an eye. Um, Andy, do you have any, um, and it, it should be affordable. You know, I, I really can't tell you what, what it's going to end up being at this point. I can only kind of update you guys on the progress that we're making. Um, Andy, any last words you want to, want to throw in here before we ro wrap up the post show? No, I think, uh, I think everything's been pretty well covered so far. Well, thank you both for being a part of this. Um, you know, it's always great to have guests. Uh, the TriCaster Kid. I did not know that. That's great. That is funny. Well, thank you so much, everybody. That's been our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Enjoy. Andy, Chris, thanks, thanks for being for here, guys. Call. All right, take care. Thanks for watching, everybody.